Hello and welcome to Recyclist. It's November 15th, 2024. I'm your host, Eric Provost, and this is your weekly roundup of all the biggest news stories in the world of waste, gas, and energy presented by Diamond Scientific. First things first, and as always, let's take a quick look at the stock market, which has come back down across the board ever so slightly after last week's historic rise. But let's go ahead and shout out five stocks within the world of waste, gas, and energy currently on the move. As of November 15th, 2024, waste management has settled back into $217.90 per share. Republic Services Incorporated is now trading at $208.04 a share. Ranger Energy Services is sitting at $15.10 a share. Brookfield Renewable Corp. is now sitting at $30.09 per share. And Nextera Energy is now at $76.35 per share. But first up in the news, we have a great way for everyone in the waste industry to make their voices heard. Because the EPA is now officially accepting public comment on a series of proposed changes to landfill regulations. In a recent release, the organization said they are now soliciting comments on a series of white papers regarding landfill management practices through January 23rd, 2025. The agency said it is looking for ways to, quote, streamline, improve, and harmonize the current suite of emissions regulations for municipal solid waste landfills, end quote. In eight white papers, the agency included a series of possible changes to its new source performance standards and emissions guidelines for new and existing landfills. Those changes include adding an organic waste diversion credit, allowing a regular aerial monitoring program, creating a methane emission threshold to trigger regulations for landfills, and more. And sticking with the U.S. government for just a second, this past week, a group of 36 organizations representing fuel retailers, energy marketers, and biofuels producers sent a letter to U.S. lawmakers imploring Congress to pass a short-term tax package before the end of 2024 to ensure energy and biofuel industry stability. According to them, the combination of uncertain and still unissued guidance for Inflation Reduction Act provisions set to take effect in 2025, as well as existing subsidies set to expire at the end of 2024, could create what they call unnecessary disruption in energy and fuel markets. In part, the letter says, quote, Absent the certainty provided by a bridge package, American consumers would face rising energy and fuel prices, and our organizations and the members we represent would face regulatory, legal, and tax filing uncertainty. The combination of these effects would be economic headwinds at a time when Congress and tax writers are attempting to consider more broad, holistic reforms and extensions in the tax system. End quote. And up next, in a recent release, General Galactic announced they had raised $8 million in new funding to advance their technology that converts CO2 emissions into fossil-free hydrocarbon fuel. The funding comes from Harpoon Ventures, Refactor Capital, and additional investors, bringing the total investment in the company to $10 million. The company says the investment will help accelerate the development of their so-called Genesis technology, which transforms industrial CO2 waste into fossil-free natural gas. The Genesis system is designed to work with existing energy infrastructure, aiming to eliminate reliance on fossil fuels while serving sectors like maritime shipping, agriculture, and heavy industry. And next, researchers from the University of Kentucky Martin recently published a study in the Journal of Environmental Management in which they conclude that stillage, a leftover byproduct from bourbon and whiskey production, holds the potential to be a sustainable energy supply. 
Stillage, which remains after grains are distilled into bourbon, has traditionally been used as feed for livestock. However, Kentucky's cattle population has reached its lowest point since 1962. According to one of the researchers, quote, stillage has been piling up and there just aren't enough cattle to consume it all. So distilleries are beginning to explore new ways to use this material and renewable energy is one of the most promising solutions, end quote. For more on this story, I highly recommend checking out our recent Recyclist interview with Chris Negus of Global NRG about this exact topic. But first, just a quick reminder, Recyclist is a registered trademark of Diamond Scientific, an industry leader in gas analysis, instrumentation, and solutions. Make sure to visit them online at diamondsci.com. That's diamondsci.com. Or you can even set up a personalized presentation by calling 321-223-7500. Now on with the news. Novilla RNG recently announced that renewable natural gas production has begun at its new RNG facility at Lynn Brothers Dairy in Unity, Wisconsin. The project represents Novilla's fourth project to reach operations and the second in the state. Initially, the project is expected to produce the energy equivalent of nearly 1 million gallons of gasoline per year. Additionally, the company announced four other projects slated to come online in the next year and a half. An additional plant in Wisconsin, one in Vermont, and two more in South Dakota. Mark Hill, the co-CEO of Novilla, even said, quote, Building on the success of our first four projects, we are continuing to work with great dairies and build out new projects at a reasonable pace, with four new projects coming online in the next 15 months. End quote. And up next, Energia just struck a huge deal. The company announced this past week it has entered into a long-term operations and maintenance contract with Rialto Bioenergy Solutions, LLC, an affiliate of Savannah Bioenergy, LLC. The Rialto facility is the largest landfill diverted organic waste to renewable natural gas facility in North America. Under the terms of the contract, Energia Services expects to operate the facility for the following 10 years. Steve Compton, the president of Savannah Bioenergy, said, quote, The Rialto facility is a critical asset serving the organic waste diversion needs of Los Angeles's Recycle LA franchise and the broader Southern California region. We are making capital and operational improvements to ensure we provide a reliable organics processing solution, end quote. And up next, Deep Sky, a Canadian carbon removal project developer, just sold 10,000 carbon removal credits to the Royal Bank of Canada and Microsoft. The project aims to remove 10,000 tons of CO2 from the atmosphere over the next 10 years through multiple technologies at Deep Sky Labs, the first carbon removal innovation and commercialization center in the world. Deep Sky says they are committed to delivering an initial 10,000 tons of carbon removals with options for an additional 1 million tons from future projects. And lastly, staying in Canada, the municipality of Blue Water in Ontario just received a massive grant to expand their wastewater operations. Blue Water is receiving about $8.3 million in funding for the project, which has an estimated price tag of around $11.4 million, leaving the municipality with just more than $3 million to fit the bill. The funding comes through the province's House Enabling Water Systems Fund, which assists municipalities in improving drinking water, wastewater, and stormwater systems to support housing growth. Lisa Thompson, the Minister of Rural Affairs, said, quote, To meet the growing housing demand in rural communities across Ontario, investing in drinking water and wastewater treatment infrastructure is essential. End quote. And that will do it for your November 15th, 2024 News Roundup, brought to you by Recyclist, a registered trademark of Diamond Scientific. I've been your host, Eric Provost, and we will see you back here next week for another brand new episode of Recyclist. Thank you. 